Hey, and welcome to our latest Redmond Reviews. I'm Chris Garlock, joined as always by Michael Redmond, Nine Down Professional. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Chris. So I know it's morning there uh, in Japan, but I have to tell you, you may notice the, uh, having a, a sip of this every once in a while. We just had our Moon Cha Memorial Tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, Moon Cha wow. was a yeah. really uh, terrific uh, local player who, who died some years ago. And uh, we've revived that tournament here in DC uh, at the National Go Center. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, Eric Louis uh, won. Actually, Eric Louis has won every tournament we've had at the National Go Center. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Eric. Um, all right, so you have a really interesting game of your own. I have to tell you, I have been looking forward all week to this. I love the AlphaGo games. But they um, they do make my head hurt a little bit, just a, mm -hmm. just a little bit. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, this game between two humans. Yeah. So what did you tell us? Easy to understand. Yeah. Um, well, Kill is actually um, this is the game um, you might recall. I uh, we put out a video about my game against Koichi. Koichi. Yes. Um, and so that was um, a big name. So after that, um, I was set up against Kyo, who is. When I played him, he was just, I think he was a four down. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it probably says in the, rep, the SCF and stuff. Um, but um, he was already um, set to become a seven down because he's in the Kisei uh, S League. Mm -hmm. And the, in the Kisei tournament, the S League is the, the final league that decides the challenger. So it's the final six people. Um, and he was in the A League before. And he had a record of five and one or something like that. Mm. So he was going to promote to the S League. Um, and so, like, uh, about a week after we played this game, he was promoted to seven top. Nice. Um, and he, he's one of the most formidable player, young um, Among the young players, I, I'd, um, I would name him among, I'd say, about three of the most formidable young players. Sure, so it was very exciting for me. One of these sort of next generation players? He's coming up like I would... Um, there's a few players who are sort of outstanding in the uh, low 20s. Like, mm -hmm. um, he's, he's just finished winning a lot of under 20 tournaments. There's a lot of them now. And he, he has a very good record in those. Um, and he came second in one of the lighting, lightning tournaments, I think. But um, he hasn't really made any big wins in the major tournaments yet. But now he's in the final set, section of the league. I think he might um, be showing up. In the news a bit more in the future. All right. Yeah. Well, this is very exciting. All right. So let's. Uh, what's what's the story of this game? Um, well, I start out um, using some moves from Master. Uh, I mean, actually, AlphaGo, mm -hmm. um, or actually both. It's it's um, the move I use shows up in both, and I have a nice game plan to start with. Um, but there are things I would change if I had another chance with the same position. Um, and then, um, well, to put it short, I think he outfighted me, but I, I made a, a really um, one blunder that I really regret. So, mm. so I'll be talking about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, sorry about the blunder, but uh, let's let's yeah. go ahead and take a look at the, <laughs> the game. Yeah. Well, I have white, and so but the first move looks like I'm playing mirror mirror goal, um, money goal, but I'm just um, I'm trying to balance it. Um, I had the feeling he would be playing, um, he, he has been influenced by AlphaGo a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided to play the three, four points and see what he'd do with them. Because I was, um, I didn't feel like having a game with him jumping into the three, three point if I played a star point. So I decided to avoid that. And I saw him play the three, three point. And I'll be talking about these three, three points, um, not very much in the AlphaGo series. Because AlphaGo doesn't play there, like it hardly ever does. And um, I found that it played once against Kate mm -hmm. in the three-game match. Um, and that was the second game. And that was the only game that I found that AlphaGo has played it. There's, mm. um, there was the team, the pair goal, um, in which I think it was Guli and who was the other player? There was a, there was a pair goal game mm -hmm. at the Uchem match. But I think it was maybe the human player who played the three three point in that game. Mm. So um, so AlphaGo doesn't play the three three point very much. But the fact that AlphaGo invades against the star point and invades in the three three point so much 
has made people change their ideas about the three three points. So this is an effect that a kind of indirect effect that AlphaGo has had on a large number of Go players is that people have uh, rethought the three three point and it's become very popular again. Mm. Um, because the idea is, if AlphaGo likes to invade there, what's wrong with starting with that point? Taking and it so away. People are, yeah. Like there was about two players um, who I could name who were prominent players in Japan who played the 3-3 point before AlphaGo. Like it was Ishida Yoshio and it was Komatsu Hideki. Like there was two players who, um, who I could name um, and they played the 3-3 point a lot. Mm -hmm. But then now it's like it's more than half maybe. Wow, that's a huge increase. Um, especially among younger players. Like, older players don't change so easily. And so, um, at this point, it's, a, it's still kind of a similar position, except for the lower right corner and the upper left corner are different. Um, and this is a point where, just looking at the right side, this is a position that comes up a lot, and usually white would play here. Mm -hmm. This this would be a kind of a standard thing to happen, um, and what I didn't like about this is because, is in this seki this this is this kind of thing starts like at this point sometimes black can play here, sometimes black can play here. Both of these have become recently popular, and um, the way black is not playing the joseki move on the right side here is sort of. Um, another indirect effect from AlphaGo. You, you might remember this shape in the upper right was mm -hmm. happening in the Master Series a number of times. It was yeah. happening three, four games in the Master Series. Um, and Black is putting a lot of pressure on white in the upper right and hoping to make the right side a big, um, a kind of a Moyo-like territory. Right. And I didn't like this. Um, so I, I wanted, at this point, I had the feeling I wanted to try something different and I, this move came to mind. Like this is a move that AlphaGo mm. will play when it wants Black to play on the upper side. And there's an idea here: is that um, if we assume Black plays there, sure. Um, now White wants to play an, a, a, an attachment underneath, right here on the lower right, right corner. And when Black plays the avalanche, the Nadaria Joseki, um, there's a ladder that um, has to do with it. Like if black plays here, um, when white plays the low, the, the, the small nadare, uh, the small avalanche, uh, the latter favors white, just because that uh, stone in the upper right corner there, uh, that's a 3-3 three, three point, it's going to be weak to the latter, and it's going to mm -hmm. make a difference in this case. Because when white plays here, um, if black extends, now this is, um, this is, you can look at the ladder, it's going to work for white. It's going to slip right uh, right past that three, po three, three point. Wow, it's one of those cases where if the stone's on the three line, three, three line, then white can finally um, slip through. But if that was diagonally at the star point, um, for instance, it would um, stop the ladder. Mm. And so when the ladder is good for black, good for white, this is going to be a collapse for black because the corner dies. Of course. So black would be forced to, at this point, would be forced to. Um, to play this move, and white would um, this would be okay for white whether white plays this way and starts a fighting joseki, or otherwise white could just play this joseki, and this would be okay for white too. Like black's wall would be in the wrong direction, and white would white would be in the right direction. Like like that group that white has in the upper right would be erasing the effect of black's wall, mm -hmm. and so this would be good for white, and so. Um, the reason I'm going into the small Nadari, the Nadari here is because this is what White has to worry about. Uh, when White has already played the upper right side, White has that group there. Um, black will want to be switching to the lower side instead of taking the right side. Like if Black takes the right side, it's just like this. And Black doesn't. Black can play the Joseki move, but whatever Black plays on the right side, that marked White stone is going to be in the way. And it's not going to be very effective. So Black's right. pointing in the wrong direction here. So that's my plan, and so I, I felt that this um, this move that we saw in the Master games uh, two or three times, the Master series, mm -hmm. and also um, AlphaGo is still playing it in some positions. It's just playing this move. Sometimes it plays that final extension on the fourth line, which I don't like. Um, but uh, in any case, it's being played by 
it's being played by master the master version as well as the current well i can't really say current version um yeah, my understanding is that they have they're, they're still developing it they, they've said they've retired off ago but i think that just means that they're not playing any big matches anymore mm -hmm. but i think they are um continuing continuing to develop it mm -hmm. Um, and so it's getting better and better, uh, supposedly. AlphaGo, that is. Um, I, 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 even talking about my own games, I, I can't get away from AlphaGo. <laughs> but Black plays, I, Black plays the attachment. Um, so the reason is all of those variations that I was just showing. Basically, right. Black wants to avoid White playing that attachment on me. So I get to play the pincer. And just because Black does have a stone end upper left, I, I decided to play at a bit of a dip distance from black stones, not to be, um, like if I had played that move one closer, then black would counter pincer and black would have a lot of space on the left. So I decided to take a balance here. As, and already the game is looking like white is gonna be the one taking territory just with this one Jose mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, when I'm taking more territory than my opponent, I want to keep it relatively simple and um, less fighting, you might say, because mm -hmm. um, when black has very strong positions, like in the lower right corner and the upper left corner, um, and I have low positions such as the upper right corner, then any kind of fighting will be advantageous for black. So I, I, I am conscious at this point that I want to keep the game simple. So I play here, and again, in general, the right side is the smallest side in the, in the game because I have that solid group in the upper left, upper right corner. Right. And so black, I, I, it's worthwhile for me to force black to play an extension somewhere on the, on the right side. So that's why I'm playing this Joseki now. And black so, plays a high extension, yes. So a quick question, um, just because we've seen it so often in the AlphaGo games, where AlphaGo will just completely play away. We were looking at it, I think, just in game six about it. You know, a couple of moves like this, and then AlphaGo just completely playing away. Are you seeing much of that in in pro games now? You mean like the move Black just played, playing away from the Josek or something? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, a little bit, yeah. It's mm. something. Um, it's why I um, played the upper side first before playing the lower right because the upper side is much more important, I think. Uh huh. Um, but in like in this position. It's the right side or the left side. The left side is not really that heated up at this point in the game. Right. So it's, um, it's a good time for white to be forcing black to play a move on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, the right side is small. So in this case, it doesn't really apply. But um, I don't really remember seeing human players um, playing away from that skehiki joseki where black plays a high kakari to the komoku and white plays under the attachment. Right. Um, the one I was showing just a few moments ago. Right. Um, and AlphaGo never plays the Joseki move in the middle of the side. It doesn't extend. Mm -hmm. um, usually it plays further away. Actually, um, we'll be seeing that in a number of the AlphaGo games. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't seen humans doing that very much. Just curious. Uh, not, the, not the same way AlphaGo does. Um, that's act it's really interesting fighting that happens from those games. And I would be willing to try it. It's one of the things that I would try maybe. Well, it's why I raise it because I could definitely see you know you're doing that, and it you know clearly you know it, it is incredibly deep reading that has to come out of that, right? So, I could, it, it turns into some of the really exciting fights, even yeah. when AlphaGo does it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, something to look forward to. Yeah. Well, I do want to explain this black move. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's a number of reasons that Black is not playing the normal extension, which would be on the third line, mm -hmm. um, just just to the right of that zone, or maybe one further along the side. Right. Um, that, uh, that and the, part of the explanation is I've marked a point there, mm -hmm. which is where the next move that Black is going to play on the right side. And like uh, people say that you want when you surround territory on the side, you want to have a combination of stones on the third line and stones on the fourth line to make it a yeah. nice. Um, a nice shape to make it, um, if it, if you have all your stones on the third line, it becomes a bit flat mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it doesn't expand into the center. And so black is setting up to play at the mark point, which will have some, ex some, um, value in reducing the size of white's upper side, upper right corner. And so that will be a, a big move that black is looking to play next. 
But there's also the fact that if white plays away, for instance, let's have white play that move, um, black is also going to have a stronger attack with that stone on the fourth line because mm. when white moves out like this, um, black's, black's shape on the right side is fairly stable when black has a stone on the fourth line like that. So um, black can ex extend on the lower side. White's group in the lower right is not alive yet. Um, and black's gonna be, uh, for instance, um, let's just make a variation. Locally, black can play stuff like this and stuff like this. And we can see that having that stone on the fourth line, uh, let's mark it. Having that stone here on the fourth line is fairly effective sure. um, in attacking white because black, the idea of this fight is that black is trying to force white to live in the corner, which will be a small territory. So it's a very small move that white will be forced to play. Otherwise, moving out into the center is just this tiny little hole there, which is going to be a lot of dame points for white. So white doesn't want to do yeah. that. Either. Yeah, white's just playing on dame, and black has to play on both sides. Of course, black will start probably with the pincer here because that's sure. just a, there's no, um, it's a, it's a move that's going to be worthwhile, whatever happens. Mm. Uh, but so this is the fight that black is threatening. And so I thought of that and I came up with this move. I'm, I'm sort of proud of this move. I'm, that was, that was the pride that came before the fall, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> so often the case. Yeah. It looks, it looks um, nice though, right? It's a nice move. Like normally white would be playing at the mark point. Sure. Um, but That's then again, black's, black's extension on the right side is in a kind of a nice place. So, and it would be a slow move. So, since I want to move to the left side of the board fairly quickly, and because black stone is relatively close, I mm -hmm. figured that I could play this this exchange, which right. strengthens black. But that mark stone there is it, now it's too, way too, too close. Too close. To yeah. Yeah, it's way too close. And even if black, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's the various. Even if black plays, uh, let's have black play a move here. Even if black plays here, that's not going to be forcing anymore. Oh, cool. Because um, like yeah. um, when white plays away and black plays here, now we're back to the same stuff that I was showing before, only just, it took right. black an extra to get there. And you so got to play. play elsewhere. Yeah, so it's sort of slowing black down. Um, and there was a very minor loss that black got um, reinforced there. It's minor in this case because of the position of that marked stone. Like that stone would, black would like to have that stone all the way, yeah. um, all the way on the side. Like white, black would like to have it all, all the way over here, yeah, right, and it's way right. too close to black. Stone. So locally, white's taking a loss, but it's um, it's reduced by the positioning of that stone. And so I played here, um, and. Can we go back just for a second? Just have a, a real quick question, just to go back uh, to where Black played the marked stone uh, because of your whole analysis of how Black then has the really nice follow-up move. Um, I would assume that a white play, you know, somewhere around there would also be big, but not sente, right? Yeah, um, uh, let's just move then. Let's see, let's make a variation. A white move here would be standard. And mm -hmm. black would maybe play here or maybe invade the upper right, upper, upper side. Like mm -hmm. black could play here or play here. Mm -hmm. um, either way, black's going to take control of the game. This is, this invasion in the upper side was something that was really bothering me a bit. It was mm -hmm. um, going to be pretty annoying because um, running out into the center with a eyeless white group would be pretty useless. Like it would be, sure. um, there would be no future white territory attached to that. And so it's something that I was wanting to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's why I am trying to take Sente here, because I don't like this. I don't like uh, this variation either. So yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I wanted to take Sente to get to the upper upper left mm -hmm. with this move. Um, and this reduces this gets rid of the invasion at A for the time being. So okay. There's still a bit of bad Aji there, and it also threatens to jump in at B, which would be a lot of tr trouble for Black. So it's it's a forcing move. It's it's good because it's a forcing move, but actually now I think that I was uh, a bit too hurried to get there, mm. uh, and I was worried about that invasion a day. So that's the reason I hurried to play that move. But I should have started with this. Yeah, and I think this opening is actually um, actually slightly better for White. I think White has an advantage already, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just because my that that choice that I made inspired Balfogo in the upper right corner. 
um, it worked so well. It's working fairly well in this position. So I, I think I should just play here and make this exchange and then play here. Now that would be the correct order of moves. And black can, like black can play uh, something like this or black can play something like this to secure the corner, in which case I would be able to keep on pushing on the side. Um, or black can play some, this would be quite similar. I would push once maybe and um, do stuff like this maybe. And stuff like this, and then something like this. So this would be a close game. Mm -hmm. And in this game, I can feel fairly safe about the upper side mm -hmm. uh, because, um, because white has this move against the corner, which hits a weakness in black's shape, and black usually has to pull back here. So I have the option of scooping out the corner. Mm -hmm. Like if, if black plays something like this, then this is going to um, mess with black's territory. So the, the black's territory would be disappearing. And again, I would be strengthening the upper side territory. So I have this move in the corner, which will give added, it gives added security to my upper side group. Mm -hmm. And um, with a six and a half Komi, I think it's, this is a slight advantage for white. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an easy win. It's going to be a lot of end game. Um, but it, I think white should be, uh, my feeling is white should have an advantage. So that's, um, that's what I would have done. I would have played, started with this move. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see from what I was saying before, I was sort of anxious about that invasion at A. Um, but I think that this is a significantly pressing here is so big locally that Black doesn't have time to invade yet. So uh, that's why I would play here. And, and because you were so concerned about that, was that, is that just too much of an extension uh, on the upper side? Well, it had to be there at the time because I wanted to get sent A. I gotcha. managed to get sent there for the time being, yeah. Gotcha. And it works really well when white plays this move because the combination makes it a safe white territory. It's a nice move, I like it. And so black plays, now this was a really good move. Um, and this is really the move that I had missed because usually, uh, let's see, um, no, I, I don't need that first. Usually I would expect black to be playing a bit more conservatively, like for instance, something like this to get mm -hmm, rid of that mm -hmm. space. And then I would be free to do whatever I wanted on the on the left side. Like I might sure. even, in this case, I might even choose to do something like this. Um, it would make it a lot easier for me. Um, and even if black uh, doesn't do that, but does something like this, it would be quite similar. That would be a, a nice Kikashi and I could just do whatever I wanted next. Um, I might play um, here once, just to make that a bit safer, because it is still a vulnerable position. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, the fact that Black played this move, it's leaving some weakness in the corner, like I still have this move, and Black will have to back up against that. So it, it gives a lot of um, freedom to my upper side group, um, but it really changes what's going to happen in, in the lower left corner. And so this extension actually uh, was a very important move in this game. And this is a move that I, I learned something from. And so I press here. Um, at this, After Black has played this extension, there's not really any room for me to be jumping into the left side. So my game plan is to press down on the left side and build something on the lower side. Um, and that should be enough. But uh, actually when Black plays this extension, Black is planning to push through and cut here. And the point of what I was saying is that Mark stone there, having that stone there, it still looks a bit far away, mm -hmm. but combined with the fact that black has a general thickness throughout the board, um, this um, cut here is actually quite effective. Wow. And so this is a point where um, I think I sort of lost control of the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. And um, while I felt that I had a slight advantage at the start, um, at the very least, this is um, undecided at this point, and I, mm. I, I feel much less comfortable about having a lead at this point. In fact, I would prefer to play with black. But of course, my opponent was shaking his head and sort of muttering to himself and acting as <laughs> if he wasn't happy. And after the game, he was saying he thought that white had a lead and stuff like that, but I, I don't really believe him completely. Um, uh, so I, I, would say, I would say that uh, this is the move that I would change. This is where I would be playing right. um, just a different right away. Yeah. 
I would have played here yeah. if I was given another chance. Well, and so black with, with this commentary, you do get another chance. So there you go. Oh yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't get to see what he's going to do against it though. Ah, uh, okay. That's you could point. you could ask him, but yeah. you wouldn't believe. It. I can play a game with myself. Yeah, but if it's not a, a tournament game, it would wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. And so we and so. Um, now this joseki, the you could call it a joseki, but there's a lot of variations. I was going like to ask. White can be covering on the third line. Um, White basically has two choices here. White can cover on the third line or extend here, and it's really hard to choose between these variations. Like, um, I wouldn't feel confident in telling you what a joseki is in this in this corner. Really? Okay. Um, so in this case. I don't really have very much room on the on the left side, so uh, let's just put a variation. I could have played something like this, um, but Black's going to play here, and this kind of thing. Uh, let's just have Black play this move sometime too, and, and something like this. We can see that White's sort of cramped on the left side. Yeah, uh, and this is a Joseki shape that has been around for centuries now. It's been around for hundreds of years. Uh, the players in Edo would play this kind of thing sometimes. It's not as Edo far back era, as that, so really. Was three, four hundred years ago, people were playing this already. Wow. Um, but in this position, there's so many black stones on the left side, um, mm. it's not looking good for white. Mm. 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 Um, so I, I didn't like that. Um, so maybe, so so yeah, I feel that jumping here, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. this is the variation I like best. Um, I actually spent a lot of time a lot of time on this move because the other the other variation would be to cover here yeah show us and, that one yeah well uh, white has two choices again white can cut here or can cover um i would probably cover but then something like this um and that clamp on the second line that's what black is going to use this um clamp um mm -hmm. in various mm -hmm. like if, if white maybe black will just uh cut now but like if, if white does something like this Black can use this clamp, and it's really bothersome because it's going to take away White's eye space, and um, potentially could give Black some eye space. And um, like if White does the shape kind of move like this, then it looks like Black's going to be able to um, punish these stones on the lower side fairly strongly. Sure. Um, so this kind of thing, uh, White might uh, play. There's variations. Like at this point, White could just play an extension here. But I just don't like this. I, I don't like the way that um, white has a shape on the left side in which it's with the clamp there. There's no way for white to make eye space, basically. That's mm. what I don't like about it. Mm. So I didn't like that. Uh, this is um, the way I would have played maybe if I didn't play in the game. Um, I just thought that this looked a bit more attractive. And um, the point with this variation where I play the extension, again, this is a point where sometimes you would see white playing something like this to threaten the corner, and black would be playing something like this to live in the corner. And mm. this would be a, a, a carpenter square, so it's a kind of a co like position, but with the open liberty there and um, all sorts of hanes that are forcing, it's pretty close to a living shape. And so this kind of thing would happen. It's going to be very... Um, time-consuming and difficult for me to try to make that call in, when in this particular position. I like I like to judge you. Close, close to a living shape. Yeah, close to living, yeah. <laughs> and again, I don't like the, the shape of white stones. Like that Kosumi there, um, it's not really in the most effective point. So I would rather be playing something maybe on the fourth line to force what black to live in the corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in the game, I, I just played here immediately. Okay. And... It's a very important point that um, I'm surrounding territory on the lower side, but the left side group, um, I'm trying to play lightly here. I'm trying to make sabaki. And, and at this point of the game, I have the right idea. Um, I just forget it later. But at this point, <laughs> I'm playing very lightly on the left side. And so I'm, I, whatever happens, I, I'm gonna allow black to live in the corner and and that's what happened, like, um, black takes the one stone, black can do that. And I get to um, these three marked stones here, even these three stones, where they're, cut, they're cutting stones. But since I'm more or less alive on the lower side already, 
Um, I can even afford to sacrifice these three sums. Mm -hmm. and sacrifice mm -hmm. sums. So um, the fact that I am not really staking a lot on this fight, and I've taken the territory on the lower side first, mm -hmm. it means that um, I can afford to play lightly on the left side. And so since black does have, uh, black has a very solid shape in the upper right, where I've um, played the Kosamitsuke, or as Americans say, I've kicked to force black to stand up. Mm -hmm. um, and then black has this strong shape in the lower right. Uh, black has strong shapes all over the place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I still don't want to fight um, in the center of the board. I want to be dodging around and avoiding the fight. And it's really strange um, to think of that um, when I have such a clear vision of what I want to do here. Mm -hmm. And then I forget it um, in the middle game. Uh, like only a few more, more, more moves. Huh. Um, so what happened? So I live in the corner. Um, I think underlying it's when uh, it's it's already happening really with this exchange. But um, at this point, my opponent was saying after the game that uh, White is going to win, mm -hmm. and I don't really agree with him. I would I would prefer. I think it's a close game at least. Okay. And like White has more territory. Uh, if we're calling the upper side territory and the right side, well, the upper side is a bit. Um, since black is weak in the corner still, mm. um, we could say white has something like 10 points in the upper side. Just, it's mm -hmm. not really territory yet, but it's it balances off with the fact that black's corner is weak too. So if we call that 10 points on the right side, something like at least 15 points, and then a few points in the corner, so that's 30 points. So white has something like 40 points. Um, if we're calling the upper side right territory, we have to call the upper left uh, corner black territory, so that's about okay. 20 points. Mm -hmm. And then black doesn't really have any, black has a few points here and there. And so white has a bit more territory. Black's in the mid 30s, where white has a, a solid 40 points. Mm -hmm. um, and then black has this thickness in the center. So um, white's ahead, of, ahead in territory on the board, and then has Comey, so that's a sizable difference. Um, but black is, has potential to gain points in the center. Sure. So I'd say it's a it's an even game, and um, just because there's so much, this is a game where black can be more active in trying to do stuff. It's it's going to be more fun for black basically. Uh, black's going to have be able to be the one who's going to be trying stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I would prefer to play with black, and uh, so that goes back. Uh, I might as well go back and um, and just say it once more. It goes back. To, to that move, this move, where I, I would play here next time. Gotcha. And this, this would avoid the fighting. It, it would be very unreasonable for black to be pushing through and cutting now. Mm -hmm. So it would be the more simple variation, which um, is more fitting in this game position for white. It, because white does want to play uh, a more peaceful game when black mm -hmm. has so much thickness in, towards the center of the board. So this is kind of, it's a point where I, I'm um, not as happy with the game as my opponent seems to think I should be. And um, so, although I have more territory, I wasn't really feeling so good about the game. So we can see me pushing here on the fourth line or the mm -hmm. same cover, um, covering on the third line at the mark point. Um, and so I'm not feeling comfortable with allowing black to control the center of the board. Like if I felt I had a, a solid lead, I would be answering at the mark point. Sure. And it's, it's really hard to to even decide, um, not only to explain, to even decide for myself uh, which of these moves is better. Um, so it's like if if white plays at the mark point, black's going to have more control of the center and potential to build there. So there's a pro and a con for both of these moves, whether mm -hmm. white plays push on the fourth line or plays on the third line is marked. Um, so it's more like an expression of how I'm feeling about the game, really. I'm not feeling so comfortable um, as I um, as I thought I might be. Looking at it now, though, uh, in terms of you know, if you responded at the at the mark location, took the territory, and then as your black starts to try to do something with the thickness, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't the shoe be on the other foot in terms of you being able to you know work on erasing that thickness? Or you just feel like that black just has so, would have so much thickness that it'd be very difficult for white. 
And I still don't know which is the better move for white, even locally. Like, okay. um, it's not really all that dangerous to, to be pushing here. Uh -huh. um, so I'd say it was a it's a close game in any case. Okay. And so black, this is the key, the vital point of the game, where, um, as I've been saying, white's game plan is not to have a um, a confrontation here. Mm -hmm. And so I should have just played here. Um, well, white could play this way or could play the hanging connection. Let's, this is actually a slider not to fix the shape at all and just play on the top here. And white just easily gives up the three stones. And that's within the amount of territory I can allow black to take. And we can see that this, this is a key point, a vital point to, in black's shape on the left side. Black's shape is getting bad on the left side here. And let's just add a mover. So if black does something like this and white does something like this, we can see that white actually has some potential to build some territory on this. Mm -hmm, like the, mm -hmm. the, that upper side area is sort of spreading yeah. out center a little bit. And also I have, um, I have some potential to make eye shape when I do something like this. I can use these stones to do something like this to make some potential eye shape. This would involve a co, of course, but it also would be threatening to black's territory because there's a clamp there on the second line. Mm -hmm. And so there's all this stuff that, um, it, it will be, the point is it's going to be relatively easy for me to handle this group on the left side. It's not really going to be attacked by black. And so um, this would be an even game. And this is how I should have played. Um, but I think that it was my emotions partly and the fact that I wasn't so happy with the game position in general. Um, it made me a bit greedy here. Um, and this, this just uh, hastened my, um, my loss, basically. So, so, and this, this was, could be called the losing move. So this so is where you're speaking more like AlphaGo would, it, would have been helpful in terms of... Yeah, AlphaGo would have just covered here or played something even lighter, <laughs> maybe. Um, and it would have still been, yeah. And the other alpha goal would have cooperated and it would have been a half point difference. <laughs> yeah. So I play here. Um, I sort of have the illusion, illusion that black is not so strong on the lower side. Uh -huh. So I can, so maybe black's going to um, get into trouble there. But of course, those stones on the lower side, they're fairly light. Like black doesn't really have to save them. And the left side, when black does this, is actually turning into a fairly large territory. Like I can try to capture the, the lower side with something like this. Um, there's all this bad Aji. And the left side is just yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, blooming out into the center. And I'm going to have to worry about the upper side white group too at this point. And so it's just not worth it to be taking those stones. Too small. It's, it's going to be something like 10 points. Yeah. And so I, I, at this point, I realized I don't want to do that. So I curl around in the center. Oh, I didn't do that, sorry. I curl around in the center. And still black's getting a lot on the left side. And now it's easy for black to escape. Like, this is a very natural sequence. I don't really have very much choice here. And I make an extra eye for my center group. And you can see that I'm not getting out anything in territory out of this. Yeah. And my lower side group actually is less territory than I started out with, because it's still it's not it's not complete yet. It's not a complete right. territory. Yet. Right, right, right. And so, and I'm sort of designed to be playing dummy points in the center of the board now. Mm -hmm. um, what black is getting is the left side, of course. So I, I jump in here. I have to do that to save the marked stones, or at least uh, make them smaller. Mm. And so then black starts to attack the center. And I'm, I'm trying to balance the territory here. Also, I'm trying to put the four stones in the center in trouble a little bit. So I'm, I'm trying to put pressure on black too. But black jumps ahead of me. And we can see that black has a bit of uh, more um, freedom here. Mm. Black played a territorial move here. This right. was probably not the best move. Like um, It might have been simpler for black to control the center of the board at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, at this point of the game, whatever black does. Uh, okay, I put a lot of variations for this. Um, the easy one is if white plays here, it's going to be a, a disaster for white because this is the this is the fun variation where you get the uh, squeeze here that kills white. So that's the end of the game. Um, otherwise, let's see. 
Uh, so that doesn't work. Um, why can play the Kosumi, this one? Hmm. Now this That's, is the test. Does that work? Uh, well, um, as far as the left side is concerned, it works. But um, when black plays here, we have to remember the corner. This is this was a uh, corner. Yeah. So white gets if white plays here, then the corner is not going to be alive. This is going to die. It's a, it's a the bent four in the corner. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. Um, so and and so then white will be getting into all sorts of trouble, trying to avoid that. But it's it's not going to work out very well. Like white could try stuff like this. It's just going to be very very messy. It's not going to be very good. Mm. And so um, I switch to the corner and allow black to take the side. Actually, I'm threatening these marsh stones here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if black plays away, then I can... Um, it, it'd be perfect if black tried to attack the center, actually, because then I could go after these stones. And this is going to be a kind of a call. But it's, it's going to be a call. Black cannot connect, obviously. So black would have to play fill a liberty, and it would still be... Uh, a step call. Mm -hmm. So this would be really good for white. Th these black stones would be mostly, they would be half dead already. And these are um, cutting stones because they would, taking, capturing those stones would give white life in the center of the board. So that would be really good for white. So obviously black has to protect. This This move is a, a nice move that protects black on the left side. And so while I lost territory on the lower side, actually the corner, the lower left corner that I took, um, that's a pretty big move too. Like it's um, about 15 points I got there. Mm -hmm. um, compared, if, if we subtract the black territory that black could have gotten, it's about a 15 point difference. And so I got 15 points in the corner in return for this big side that black got on the lower side. So black gained locally, but it cost black a move. So I, I don't think I would have, played that way with black. But the game is still good for black. Black uses this forcing move. And yeah, this is a really sharp move. Um, wow. Oh, wow. And this is this is where the game just starts to fall apart. I, I After this move, um, it's very difficult for me to find a way to keep the game close, to keep the territory mm -hmm. close. Um, because this is putting a lot of pressure on me. Like if I play here, Black has a peep here, and, and this is going to be something like a co kind of shape. It's going to mm. be bad for my upper side territory. So um, what I did was I played underneath, but that's um, it's still Black's giving me trouble here. And like I could continue to um, give away a few points in the center maybe, um, but it would just be a kind of a safe way to lose the game. So I, I, at this point, um, I'm getting a bit desperate, I think. And so I, um, we start this fight in the center, um, and um, I'm, I'm having some success here. I use this forcing move here to cut the black stones off. So I'm trying to put black under some pressure here. Yeah. But black, um, black can, in a, in a, if black gets into a lot of trouble, black still has a bit of room to escape to the right. So it's not as if I can immediately capture black. Mm. Okay. And so at this point, um, I switch to the upper side. I have to back up here, and I switch to the upper side. And I've managed to um, play a few moves in that center area there, um, pushing black around a little bit before protecting the upper side. So mm -hmm. this was actually, locally, it was a reasonable conclusion for white. It wasn't so bad. Um, I did fairly well locally. But of course, the game as the game continues, that just means that it simplified the board position. And since it was already looking good for black, that means it's going to be an easy, easy for black. Um, and at this point, you know, I'm just looking for a point to resign. Um, black's, black's more than ten points ahead, uh, so I resigned here. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm more than ten points before Komi that is. You know. Huh. So it really was the the. Uh... The sort of ch on the left side, sort of forgetting what the your original side. plan was. Yeah. yeah, that was the direct, um, the direct losing move. Um, so that would be somewhere around. Yeah, just a few more moves. Uh, a few more. Here. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. 
Cause, this cause is where I lost it. Yeah. Because your intention was to was exactly we were talking you were talking earlier in this commentary about just throwing away those three stones. Yes, yeah, really strange because that was my game plan. Right. That was that was the way I um, set out to play the game, and at this point I just forgot it. <clears throat> so that's really strange. Um, and again, I would say it, it's happening because I'm not really very happy about um, mm. how the game is proceeding. And so my opponent was saying that if I had just played here, um, I would have had a winning position. I don't really agree with him in that. And I think he was mm -hmm. just being polite. Um, but it's certainly be better than the game move. Certainly better than the game, yeah. Um, it, would, it would be much more, um, a lot more work for Black to try to win the game after this. Mm -hmm. So it would be much more difficult for Black. So what you what you're talking about though is is an important thing, which is in terms of um, just a, a player's feeling for the game. That mm -hmm. that you know, hard to say whether you know your analysis is correct or your opponent's right. That you you know would have been a better yeah. position, but you you didn't like your game, right? Yeah, you, I, I would say that if I wanted to play a game that I would enjoy, I would go back to this move, right, and say I, I want to play here, and this is a variation where I would enjoy playing the game. Mm -hmm. uh, just like this. this. This is a game that um, I would have a lot of potential and I would be really interested to see how Black answers that, like if Black chooses probably not, maybe this one or maybe something like this. And I would be, I would have a lot of plans that would be exciting and interesting to myself, um, depending on which, which way Black answers. So this, mm -hmm. this would be um, a game that I would enjoy a lot. And, and there would be stuff happening on the lower side later um, where I would have a lot of choices too, so I would have more control of the game, mm -hmm. and um, and it looks better for White on the whole. And so this yeah. is the game that I would enjoy playing. And then there was that point later in the game where I I didn't throw away the three three, three stones. Um, so that that was a point where the game really became bad for me after Black played here. Right. Although it looks like, you know, as you showed, there is still some sort of interesting stuff to that. That one move, though, in the upper, upper word, where, where, where Black just plunks the stone right in there and really causes the... That's, that's so annoying when somebody finds a, a, a place like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that was like, a brilliant move. Um, let's see, we're, still, we're not quite that far, yes. Yeah, I wondered about that cut, too. You're saying that that cut was probably too soon, though, right? The, the lower um, cut. Well, you know, it's there's a number of ways to finish off the game. Yeah. Um, at this point of the game, I was thinking maybe I was putting some pressure on Blackstone in the center of the board. That sure. In the center of the board. Um, and the upper right, upper side black group. So I thought that I had some potential maybe to mm -hmm. attack here. And yeah. on, on that up assumption, I was thinking that um, maybe Black shouldn't have used that move on the lower side. Mm -hmm. But in the actual play out, um, we can see that Black um, didn't have any such problem. Like Actually, Black was on the offensive here. Mm -hmm. And so looking at that, um, the way Black played, taking the territory on the lower side was also okay, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Well, great, uh, great analysis. Uh, it's, inter it's really, it's sort of fascinating going, doing this. Just uh, before we wrap up, so for you, uh, when you're looking at your own games, after looking at these uh, AlphaGo self-play games, what are what are some of your thoughts about that? Well, um, like we were talking about, there's it's the emotions that um, I have, which are sometimes getting in my way, mm. and um, it really um, reminds me that the AlphaGo games, there there's very little emotion apparently in the game, and it, it's it's. I could attach emotions to some of the moves, but they're, they're not really there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, that's something I get out of the difference between my own games and now. And, and you know, um, when you have emotions like that, um, just as I did with that move that lost the game, that I'm saying lost the game, mm. um, it's very easy to delude yourself, to trick mm -hmm. yourself into doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's Great. the difference. We just published a piece, uh, a letter from a uh, Go player I've known a long time, Joel Sanet uh, down in uh, Florida, where he, he talks about some of this. He talks about, you know, that uh, folks talk about AlphaGo likes this move or doesn't like that. And mm -hmm. he points out, and you've, you've done it as well, that, you know, it's not AlphaGo doesn't like or don't like, you know, doesn't like or dislike a move. Mm -hmm. AlphaGo has looked at, 
you know, possibilities. And this is what you're mm -hmm. talking about. It's a very, you know, analytical, it's not emotional. Um, so to, so when we say that it likes it, it's, that's, that's, that's in our minds. Right, yeah. Yeah, in a way <laughs> that's true, yeah. It does have, it does have moves that it, it thinks are good. So the, you, it depends how you use the word like, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, I like this commentary. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. So thank you very much, Michael. We appreciate the commentary and I look forward to seeing more of those. And uh, uh, folks, of course, uh, keep watching. Uh, our plan is to continue with the, uh, the Friday releases of the AlphaGo commentaries, which are, are uh, being received very well. So we'll talk more about that. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call a day for this. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. See you next time.